you've just seen four videos there. The first by Bjarne Melgaard, Say Goodbye to Love, then the Carpenters performing Superstar and Rainy Days and Mondays, Arada, Penicha, Yaiotrum's Personally I Think Chocolate Is, which as Darren explained was a, um, a video artwork, um, and her video for Little Bit of Luck by Darren. Yeah, so a really eclectic set, um, a really interesting set, I imagine, that a lot of people found enjoyment in the Catherine Breillet hoodie that was uh, on the Muppet in the first video. Um, but all of them had to do with that sense of, like, obvious artifice in the same way that, that the American Eggs videos did. Say Goodbye to Love, the Muppet in the Real World, Superstar, um, that almost, like, when um, Karen Carpenter was standing there with the, the city behind it almost looked like a like a 40s musical or a 30s musical that's just the shop fronts the edges of a shop front echoing back onto a sound stage it's very broadway um, i think it's very yeah broad. like um singing in the rain yeah that's right um yeah interesting set of videos um what made you pair the first two and the last two i guess there's the carpenter link in the first two and the animated link in the second two and that artifice again i like like the carpenters one is like a the Carpenters one I'd seen ages ago, and I'd probably reference that to go, like, I could, this would be something I could use for my artwork and pretty much like that television technique of, I haven't done it yet, but I like the rainy floor. I like the studio window in front of her. I like that concept of wherever I see a film and you see an outdoor scene that they have to water all the roads and all the roads have to be wet so you get the reflection, so you get much better light. And I like that. That happens in the Carpenters video. And I like how beyond kind of like um, twisted that they got the Jim Henson puppets, but he's also sitting in a room of gay pornography and he's flipping through gay porn at the same time. So I like that kind of flipping of that. And Arida's videos were like just really great of her discussing problems and so forth. And I just, yeah. I particularly just liked her making that video to give her a song and, and just say, we met up for coffee, and I said, I just want you to do whatever you do. And I thought she would do, like, some multi-scene thing, but she just had this figure rotating in a blue background just on the phone the entire time. I don't know. I just found that. When she sent it back to me, I just thought, like, that was a brilliant video. That's all I can say. I think she just did an amazing job on, on that video. We had a we have a comment that popped up during that video that was just, this is giving me some kind of feeling. Which seems like one of those perfect YouTube comments that pop up in music videos. And you're like, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a sad song. It's like a sad video. I didn't know. I don't know. I like. I, and again, it comes back to the thing we talked about. I really like that artifice. And you know, she made a cartoon character on a blue screen background. It doesn't mm. even have an environment. And the character is she made this. She told me that she made the skin, and she made the skin, and she designed the clothes of what the girl was going to be wearing. So she kind of designed it and then she's just literally just rotating the animated figure around and around and she hand wrote the lyrics and put them underneath and I thought that was like, I don't know, I think she's only like 20. So I think that's like a really, I really wanted to give like her a chance to do something. There is a question from, from, sorry, you go, Alan. Oh, no, I was just going to say that it's a good, you know, her, her, her video for you and, and also her own video too, but your the one she did for you as a music video, it's a great example of that thing which you can do in music video because it is such a truncated form of, you really only need one idea, you know, one one strong visual idea and, and that's enough to kind of carry you through a whole video. So you don't need kind of 8,000 different things going on if you have one strong idea. Um, and can pull it off within that three, four minutes. Yeah, it's, it's memorable. I think what happens is the song has to propel the video. I mean, I don't know, but probably I'm not good enough to do that, but that's exactly what's happening there. And when she said that, I thought of like there's a smog video of like, uh, I think it's like of an aeroplane, and it's a cartoon as well of an aeroplane taking off, and it's the whole four minutes of the aeroplane going across the screen. I think what that song is called, but just that animation of that too. I really like that weird flex of going, we're not doing any edits. We're just going to have the one singular vision for four minutes now. And I do, and I really love that. I think it's probably actually comes back to video up because video art is quite slow. That is quite this, everything's slowed down. There's long edits. And I remember like Ben from Chapter Music when I was with them doing the earlier videos, he 
gave me a quip, which was something like, I don't care what the video is. I just need the edits to be fast and keep it moving. And I thought that was like a really, uh, he was like definitely in the mind frame of like fast, 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 edit, 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 never let the eyeballs remove from the screen. So I think like I do actually enjoy probably problematically, meaning that they're not that successful, the idea of a slow burn. And I, I think we talked about it in the chat of like Bruce Springsteen building the scrap brilliant disguise streets of philadelphia those kind of like videos that are really slow and drawn out are actually really beautiful pieces that jonathan dem kind of like aesthetic is really great um i've got a question in the chat from andreas um for you darren which is about karen carpenter he's mm. asked whether karen carpenter is particularly important for you given the selection of that video and your work i was the last in the carpenter's garden absolutely yeah karen was like absolute hero to me and I loved and I love the carpent I mean I love we're seeing a Ramon song coming up but the carpenters were the same is that they were like the full package to me and that full package was like a vase that was broken and kind of badly glued back together and that what works for them is that she had the voice she was a drummer the brother was living there they lived with their family there was lots of problems um, they recorded all this stuff in a house which I went to in Los Angeles. I made a pilgrimage to go to the carpenter's home and I made a video work over four months to rebuild their whole house in the backyard so I could walk in the back garden where Karen passed away. And that's why it was called I was the last in the carpenter's garden, so I was the last with her, I felt. And the house had been pulled down, so I rebuilt it one more time and then destroyed it after I, after I filmed myself in it. But it was that combination of, I think what we've been talking about, of like her perfection of voice and then Richard's artifice, the brother, putting the absolute perfection sheen over the top that allowed no cracks. And I think when you allow, allow no cracks, um, it only shows even more the delicacy of the situation. And that's what makes those Carpenter songs really amazing. Um, and I know they kind of tease quite a lot, but I kind of go like, she was a person I think was she was struggling a lot with um, anorexia and fame and in the shadow of her brother and he was very overbearing to her. So um, I've always loved her as a character. So I think that's why the Beyond Melgard video to see someone who's quite avant-garde and out there. And I've seen him do other things about the carpenters and him describe how he loves the carpenters too. So um, I, know, I felt a kindred, kindred spirit between Beyond and myself. In that regard, I have another yep. question in the chat. Oh, and when you go on that, because this is going to be right. a pivot. You go, Connor. Okay, it's going to be a pivot away from the carpenters, though. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the the question is um, from Ingrid in the chat, which is to the both of you: um, What's the first music video you can remember watching that had a profound impact on you, visually or thematically? I, I'm asking it to you because I read it and was like, I have no idea because the first music video that comes to my head is like Basement Jacks is where you're head at, which scared the <laughs> shit out of me as a kid. I'm going to say, like, I can just say, I'm trying to think, like, what's the earliest video? Okay, the, what, the first one that, okay, this is going to be out there, but it was probably a Culture Club's Come a Chameleon. Yes. Might have been the one, they're on a boat. Is that the one where they're on the yeah, boat? Yeah, it's like the, the, the paddle steamer. Yeah. Paddle, yeah. And there was something about I was really just in love with um, Culture Club and Boy George. And I think I was, I mean, I was living in, I grew up in Byron Bay, actually. So it was kind of like, there was something about the romanticism of the makeup and the paddle steamer and England and the water. It just seems so much of an other to me as like maybe a five-year-old or whatever I saw that maybe I, know, I might have been a bit older but I remember that being like the first one that I was like obsessed with watching Culture Club. Mm -mm. I mean the weird thing about that video is it's their kind of take on the deep south you know it's such a bizarre. I haven't thought of that till now but that's exactly what it is it's exactly what it is. The, the yeah, video it's... is incredibly problematic now so it probably is it's probably like waiters and serving yeah. stuff. I don't know. Yeah, if you watch it back these days, it's a bit hashtag problematic, as is the video for um, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? Um, 
but yeah, cult, Culture Club were were massive for for me too as a as a small kid. Um, just visually, they were so compelling, and I I still really love them. I'm I'm quite happy to listen to Culture Club any old time. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of like a, you know, yeah. I'll have to keep thinking about like a, a video, um, yeah, a, a video that maybe apart from Culture Club that they had an, had an impact. We can, dip, we can dip back in on this question. It's, it's broad <laughs> and vague enough to be able to be able to do that. Um, let's, yeah. let's move on to our next set of videos. You just mentioned the Ramones, Darren. Um, can you explain or at least tell us which Ramones video you've chosen and why? Yeah, I chose a later one, like Pet Cemetery. So, I mean, the song is kind of good and the Ramones are almost... Look, my favorite band is probably Suede, and then probably like Ramones are probably soon after that. So I kind of go like, I like those bands that have like their little internal world that kind of comes together. And the Ramones are also one of those bands. They're argumentative, they're dramatic, everything came about them. And Pet Cemetery, I just remember like the story was like they had to do this for the movie Pet Cemetery. And they went to Stephen King's house and Dee Dee wrote it in the bathroom and then came back out again. So I've written the song and they just done it. And that was a classic Dee Dee story because he wrote all the lyrics and he's the bass player in the band. And there's a great article, great story I read of them meeting a new manager before they became famous. And the manager was in the army and he talked about having kids and being in the army and how difficult it was. And Dee Dee had said, I've also got kids and I was also in the Vietnam War and it was a great struggle and that bonded them together to get the record deal. And then the crux of the story was that Dee Dee had never been in the army and Dee Dee has never had kids. And so I loved how Dee Dee just told lies 24-7. But he wrote 53rd and 3rd about being a hooker and so forth. And so one, that was the aspect I liked about this song. But two, there's kind of like a sadness to the video where the budget has started to run out and they're in like a stage plot with some, I guess, some B-grade actors acting things out and so forth around them. The song's still great. And because it was a bit goth with the tombstones, I followed up with my one called Whirlwind, which again came back to me making a video with no storyline, no prop, no nothing. And we used the hand from the record. And... uh, She's been my hand model now for about 10 artworks now, doing various things. And so, and on the back, we have the tombstones that I've made out of phone call. So Whirlwind was the next one. And I was, I think it really goes really well. It's a great video that goes with the song about a hand for four minutes traipsing over a tombstone. Again, a very simple idea drawn out. It works well. Cool. Well, let's get stuck into a, two videos now. First up, Ramones. <laughs> 